back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Presented by the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Now, here's the entire Sooner Scoop crew. Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right. Welcome back, everybody. It is time for another edition of the Unofficial 40 Podcast, the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Okay, as always, the uh, Unofficial 40, the title sponsor, the Choctaw Casinos and Resort in Durant. And a lot of great stuff going on. You stay in game. Uh, lots of promotions going on. Uh, the Chris Stapleton concert's coming in March. Uh, and a lot of different promotions going on right now, including your chance to win tickets to see the sold out, double sold out concert by Chris Stapleton. All, but just great entertainment out there. As I said, I've stayed out there uh, a couple of times. Just a, a great hotel that they've got. Lots of amenities. Lots of great places to dine. They've got the district. Uh, so it's yeah, it's a Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Uh, if you're down in Dallas, the Oklahoma City, give them a give them a look, man. It is a fantastic hotel. I've been to a lot of the big. Uh, hotel, casinos, and resorts in Oklahoma, uh, and this place is the best. So go check them out. Thanks to Choctaw Casino Resorts for being uh, a big part of our podcast, the Unofficial 40 as well, being the presenting sponsor. Great to have you back for another week. Is uh, We've had, man, uh, just seems like it's been nonstop since the last podcast. Even the last damn podcast, I had to edit it afterwards to take out stuff uh, because things had already changed from the time that we started to the time that we ended, uh, which was basically, guys, that was kind of the launching point of the Jalen Hurts possibility for OU. We were doing that podcast, uh, and some things kind of came into us that let us know that, that OU was, was really interested. And now we sit a week later, and Jalen Hurts has still not made a decision. But it's got to be today, right? I think it has to be. Maybe tomorrow, but most likely Hell, today. it'll probably be before this, while this podcast is going on. We could Are you help. guys starting to think they plan around us, like just to make it as difficult on us as possible? That would be bad. As much as Lincoln hates the media, yeah, sure. I don't know if he hates the uh, media. Know, he just doesn't care <laughs> to deal with media. It's a, it's a, it's a obligation. It's a nuisance. Like, do I think he? told Jalen to not follow him on Twitter? Yes, I believe Lincoln said, don't follow me on Twitter. Interesting. Ooh, Bob's going full conspiracy. <laughs> I, I like am. It. But are Jalen's DMs open? Like, how is he going to communicate? Well, if he was on campus, now they have the cell number. I guess so. Now, t- I mean, Bob, if you wanted to go full-blown, Lincoln could text him, be like, follow me, send him one <laughs> message, and then unfollow him. <laughs> like, so only if you were looking at the exact right moment could you have been caught. Thank you. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Bob. I like a good conspiracy. I'm all about the uh, grassy knoll. So that's that, not really like Josh. A, that never happened. <laughs> that's a. Oh. <laughs> that's not really to me conspiracy level. Conspiracy level is, you know, he could only pick up the car after he came back <laughs> next time. Oh. Uh. All right, well, let's not get into JFK because I will spend a lot of time here. So, okay, so we're waiting. JFK was never murdered. We, we're, we're waiting on. I'm just going to ignore that. We're going to fly right by it. Uh, we are going to uh, not ignore Jalen Hurts, but that's coming down today. I think the big thing, and guys, we've had so much that we've kind of uncovered, and it's been little pieces here and there. Uh, but Alex Grinch has been hired. Uh, he has hired two staff members officially yesterday. We talked about the Brian Odom thing on the last podcast. Like, don't close the door on that one. And, and that happened earlier this week. So, or uh, it happened earlier this week. They announced it officially yesterday. Uh, but, Eddie, we'll start with you. Go around the room. Um, just your thoughts on, first off, Roy Manning and uh, Brian Odom being named officially to the staff. Yeah, it would seem like it goes hand in hand with uh, everything that we thought that, I guess, preliminary thoughts on what we thought Lincoln Riley was going to do as far as. Getting younger, getting uh, guys that, you know, I, I thought it was kind of funny that uh, within, you know, an hour and a half of the hire being official or the announcement being made, uh, Roy Manning and Brian Odom had already changed their Twitter avatar or something that, uh, or, or their profile page, just something that they get it, I think would probably be the best way to put it, just as far as uh, social media and recruiting. Uh, you know, I, I'm not too upset about, uh, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of people in the message boards that are upset that uh they hired a linebackers coach to coach cornerbacks uh it's 
newsflash it's 2019 you don't you don't just stick with one job uh, if you're an assistant coach i i think that everything's going to be fine in that regard uh you know i i think that it is kind of a uh, well look at it this way how many coaches on the staff actually coach positions that we know they played in, in college like well it's like you said if 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 we were going by that Kel gundy should still be coaching quarterbacks, quarterbacks. Should only be he able should to coach be quarterbacks. only coaching quarterbacks yeah. Uh, I, it's just something. And Lincoln for, Riley was a walk-on that quit to be a student assistant. So how is he such a great offensive coordinator? Well, it's just something that people bitch about. I and I think it's just bitching to bitch. And Jay Bulware was a tight end that, in in college, and he's a running backs coach. Like you said, Kale Gunny quarterback. He's a wide receiver. I think Dennis Simmons wasn't he a defensive player? Switched to wide receivers coach. I have no idea. I know that Shane Beamer probably didn't play uh, fullback in college. No. Now, I think what they're upset about is the fact that the only time he coached corners was 2014. But and look, I get it. Well, I get can understand. I, I get well, it. Hold on, I get but it. I don't because, even get it. Get over. No, it. I get it because the secondary's been so terrible, right. and Kerry Cooks's technique teachings were were not taking hold. I mean, that was the worst technique that we probably ever seen Oklahoma quarterbacks play with the last few years. Great higher tech, by the way. Safeties coach now, for those that don't I, you don't sh- know. I think we should. I think well, on behalf of the Oklahoma staff, I think we should thank Texas Tech for what they've done. I mean, for this country, Tech hasn't done anything for the country. They the country of Oklahoma set their program back, but that's neither here nor there. I think we should just let Kerry Cooks just go on his way. He was he was good to deal with. He was good to deal with. He's a shitty football coach. Yeah. The results are there that say he wasn't very good. He didn't do a good job. But he's gone. Now you have a linebacker coach. Now you have a linebacker to coach him. So happy day. But you look at the two hires, it just feels like this is Alex Grinch putting his stamp on uh, on things. This is going to be his defense. I think there were some people that sounded like they were worried that maybe Lincoln Riley was going to interfere a little too too much. But you get guys like Odom, you get Manning with all the ties to Grinch. It, it lets you know. Right from the start, this is going to be Grinch's deep. I literally think that people sit around and make up almost like the male version of a Harlequin romance novel when it comes to these coaching hires. Like, what happened? Oh, Lincoln wanted him, and oh, but he didn't want to do this, and uh, and and, he, and Alex Grinch needed to be able to do his own, so he wanted to bring in his own guy, and uh, it's just it it sickens me. I mean that you have to go that deep down the rabbit hole. Did you? The guy got goddamn hired. He's gonna be the coach. Why can't that be enough? Why do we have to have these goddamn backstories where somebody jumped through seven rings of hell in order to get here? It, it's just stop it with that crap. I don't care about that guy. If you're gonna sit there and drone on about that in a seven-page thread on the post on the message board. I'm out. I'm ch- I just closed down one of those threads because it turned into two guys bitching at each other and name calling and, and calling rough and terrible names. It's like, my God, people. I'm Listen. not saying get a life. And I understand that, you know, that's your prerogative. It's our board. There's you're not wasting you're not killing any trees. But my God, that that stuff You'd be better off. I killing don't trees. I don't get it. Well, people love to be miserable. If they don't have anything... I don't know that it's misery. It's like... No, it is it's misery. Like it's because their wife is... They OU football to be Game of Thrones or something. Well, they they have this vision of what the program like is, the and Hobbit. it isn't. They have a vision of what they want the program to be or what they want to envision the program to be, and it just isn't that. They think that there's so much more into it. But why does it always have to go into the power struggle within, and this is this guy's coming from this way, and... Hey, guess what? You might... Because people like controversy. Or you might just be a chick. And the big problem with it, guys, has there ever been any indication that Lincoln wants to mess with the defense? No! Nope. He feel, he absolutely comes off like a guy that wants to put the right guy in charge and let them run the show. In fact, he said that much. He said when Bob hired him... when This was the day after the Orange Bowl. He talked about this, and we wrote about this. We put the quotes out there. When Bob brought him in, he didn't mess with his offense. He said, this is your offense. You do what you want. Now, he had to keep Kale Gundy, and he had to keep – who else did he have? Well, Beatonbow he wanted. I mean, everybody wanted Beatonbow. He had to keep certain coaches, but then he brought in Dennis Simmons, and he integrated everything, 
and Jay Boulware was already there, but he got to control the offense completely. So, like, Lincoln Riley is not, yes, Ruffin was going to stay. I mean, that that was commanded. Uh, Calvin Thibodeau, I think anybody in their right mind would say, yes, that's a good defensive line coach to have in this part of the country. Uh, he's young, and he can recruit. So it's not like you hamstrung him by leaving, you know, well, that's been a big argument on the board with Ruffin in his situation. May, okay, you can make an argument. Yes, he hamstrung him a little bit with, with Ruffin McNeil uh, and his age and his health and all that stuff. But at the same time, Lincoln Riley is going to say, this is your defense. Do with it what you will. Run it how you want to run it. I'm not going to meddle. I want you to be able to do what I was able to do under Bob, which is run my offense. And it's not like Ruffin isn't going to just – like he's not going to be a bad seed here and try to do his own thing. He's going to go in line with 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 Grinch. He's been around long enough to know how to adapt his coaching style to the coach that is there now. I want to apologize to uh, all the just listeners who aren't Sooner Scoop subscribers and aren't on the message boards, where I just talked complete nonsense and scream my head off and dropped a couple of GDs. You did. My mom's not going to be happy. Mm-mm. Mom's going to be pissed. We're all that's, going to hell anyways. That's my go that's my go to when I'm really mad. I I gravitate towards that more than the F bomb. Well, that was the thing when I got called out for it. I don't say GD. Like I don't have any problem with it if you want to say it, that's fine, but it's not one of my it's not one of my hallmark phrases. I say it all. I look at it like not a slight against God. I, like if God could be angry, he would be that angry. He would damn something. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I choose to view the GD. You're, you're smiting on behalf yes, of God? Yes, I'm, smi- okay. I'm using the hand of God to smite you. That's a perfect <laughs> way to put it, Josh McQuistion. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I mean, you're going to move. If, if there is. Okay. If there is. <laughs> wow. By the way, I did get an uh, email from a very angry listener, um, very upset with Eddie. About what? Uh, about wanting to... Do away with all old people. I'm going to say oh. I agree with the emailer. It's a horrible thing to say. You must be close to death. We cannot. <laughs> no, we're not going to joke about killing, rounding up old people and killing them. The genocide of old people? Yes, we're not. Wow. No, there's no joking about that anymore. I mean, it was a joke. It you was. You can get over it. If you, if you had, if you took your time, two things, and we'll, then we'll oh move on. Oh, my God. If you took your time to email Carrie about that. A, you're retired, you don't have a job, or B, you really are that miserable, and you probably do need to die. So we'll just leave it at that, and if you have a problem with that, if you have a problem with that statement... What's your email address directly? Yeah, you can send it to E-D-D-I-E-R-A-D-O at gofuckyourself.com. <laughs> Beep. Sir, I want you to know that I agree with you, and I control the beeps. So they're, they're, Maybe we could have him on the podcast up, next week and ask him what it's like to be so close to death. I don't think anybody really wants to listen to our podcast for that. I think there'd be a lot of people. You want it, would you like to start a podcast, old people near death? No, because I Called. because it was a joke. And if you can't understand <laughs> that it was a joke, you're the problem. Well, I think what it got kind of, and it was probably my, is we brought the whole Jewish thing up. And that made it a little weird. Like it's doing right now. So, anyway, sidebar, there you go. So, Josh, let me ask you, Roy Manning, um, coming in from UCLA, I told people this yesterday, like, look, don't look at UCLA's recruiting rankings and say, well, he's not, obviously didn't do a great job recruiting UCLA. We've talked about at length on this pod what a disaster Chip Kelly has been recruiting-wise out in L.A. You can't put any of that on, on Roy Manning. Uh, but I think everybody has seen Eddie put up videos of him, uh, some of their YouTube channel of, of you know what type of energy this guy has. Uh, but kind of what have you heard out on the West Coast wise uh, in terms of Roy Manning as a recruiter? Well, it's really interesting because, you know, and I know you hit him up last night, but I had talked to Adam Gorney, our West Coast expert, uh, about a week ago. And was kind of like, you know, what can you tell me on this guy? And he was like, I, I don't have any idea because that UCLA – it is so buttoned up and just ridiculous in the way they handle things that it's hard to know what is, what's, you know, like who's involved, what's happening. They, they treat it all like a national security secret. And so I, I think there is some element of that. But when you watch that guy and know, you know, he's got, he played in the NFL, he's got, a, he's a player, uh, obviously an ex player. 
there's a lot of background there, and then you watch those videos from his time at Washington State and kind of see his energy. I, I don't need to know a lot more to know that that guy can probably recruit pretty well. And I know he got some guys at Washington State that were maybe not the premier guys, but he did nice evaluations, went in and beat out, you know, the, oh, I guess you would say the second tier of California recruiters, the Arizona State, the Arizonas. He went and got some good players out of California, which, like we talked about in the last pod, with Oklahoma losing Tim Kish, I know a lot of OU fans, uh, you know, I guess if you want to say rejoiced about that or whatever, but they've lost a lot of connection to California. Tim Kish was a huge, huge part of that. And he brings that back into the fold for Oklahoma. So this is a big deal. It's a big win for OU. Um, I, I think, like I said, that he'll help them a lot in the greater Los Angeles area, kind of knowing that area after having spent the last year there with UCLA. Uh, and, and, I mean, you're right. I mean, the California part of it is important. Uh, you know, they still have Chip Viney on, on faculty. Uh, was for an in-house guy, uh, the connections he still has uh, out in California, I think, helped him out a lot. Uh, but I, let me ask you guys this, and, and Bob, I'll throw this to you, kind of like, are there any concerns about coaches that they've lost in any recruiting connections there? Yeah, I, I think when you look at Kish, that, that was a big one with the uh, West Coast. But uh, let's see, what you, uh, Cooks? He did a good job. I don't know if people thought he won like real legitimate battles outside of maybe Buki. The rest felt like yeah. they were tailor made for him to win. He should have gotten Robert Barnes when your dad has played and was a ca- was a captain. Trey Brown, Justin Broyles, kids that are from within the states. So I don't know if he won any big uh, big time battles throughout his years with the Sooners, but. Y- I I think they're doing just fine. I think they'll need to find replacement for what Mike Stoops was doing in Florida for sure. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, like it. It. I'm not saying that. You know, trust me. Don't start on this. Oh, Kerry's make excuse for Mike. Uh, but I mean, you look at what he did over the years, especially you know in Florida. Uh, I mean, he basically put on his hard hat and said, "I'm going to get Caleb Kelly," and he got him. I mean. He could he could well, do that California. every once in a while. Yeah. Well, but I'm saying, yeah. I mean, he built the relationship with Tony and everything out there, and yeah, and the, what he's done at St. Thomas Aquinas with Nick Benito, Jaden Davis. We'll see if that yeah. can continue throughout. But the I'm next just saying, when there was a national guy, and he said, "I'm going to go get that kid," a lot of times he could go and get him. And so, are they going to have that guy that they can just sick on a kid? And I, you know, I'm sure that's kind of Lincoln now. I mean, that's kind of what he's become as a recruiter and a head coach. Uh, but yeah, I mean. Brian Odom, Josh, um, you know, he's a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience, uh, but a guy that obviously played here has, you know, is going to have some passion for the state of Oklahoma and for the university. Um, just kind of, if you heard anything on him in terms of uh, recruiting, you know, is, is, is this going to be a little bit of a learning experience for him, uh, being that he, you know, Missouri was a good, good school, but Oklahoma's on a different level. I think with both these guys, you know, it's almost, and, I, and I've talked to other coaches about this. When you kind of make that step up to where you're really at one of the, you know, one of those schools that the second they walk into a school, the head coach comes around his desk and wants to shake your hand and wants to tell you about all the kids he's got. You know, they're, they're, the, the high school coach is going to give you every pitch he has to get you involved with his kid rather than the school trying to convince that high school coach, hey, come look at my guys. You know, the, Oklahoma is one of those places all the kids want to go. And they talk about it's almost like being a kid in a candy shop because every door is open to you. You know, in any any place you show up, they want you there. You know, they, they're gonna they're gonna talk to you. They, they're gonna make sure you bump into the kid at school. They're gonna do everything they can to make sure you get all the time you need. And I think that's what you'll see with these two guys. And they've done a nice job. Um, but I think. Especially with Odom, I'm very interested to see if they give Odom Oklahoma. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's got a lot of connection to the state. You know, his family is deeply entrenched in high school football in Oklahoma, um, and so I think that could be very interesting. And I think it would make a lot of sense for Oklahoma. And I think it might negate a lot of the talk that has come up over the last couple months over whether Oklahoma does enough for in-state guys and whether they develop those relationships enough. For Brian Odom, it's going to matter. He grew up playing Oklahoma high school football. It matters to him to you know that these kids trust him, that the coaches trust him, that they know him. 
So I think that's going to be a big deal. And I, obviously, I think one of his first jobs will be in Tulsa to kind of get everybody back on board because I the conversations I've had, there were some very real issues between some of the people in Tulsa and frankly, Kerry Cooks. Like I, I just heard things that, that that was some of the problem with both Josh Proctor and Dax Hill that they would talk to guys that were already there from Tulsa, kids they knew, and they weren't getting really strong reviews about playing at Oklahoma for him. So we'll, we'll see how that all gets corrected. But I think Brian Odom in state could be a big fix kind of quickly for Oklahoma. Yeah, Josh, you think it be so quick it could be next weekend, junior day, or maybe the following junior day? It's tough to say. Like, I, you know, I, I talking to some of the people I've talked to, I've got some early, you know, confirmations that some guys are going to be there. And actually, I need to get a list started here on the site. Um, but that feels like a lot of Texas guys. Like maybe the first one's going to be kind of that premier day where it's only guys with offers or only guys that they're, re- you know, the, our top one or two guys at each position. I haven't really talked to that kind of secondary group that acts like, okay, yeah, that that's that's – I'm going to be there that weekend. So we'll kind of see how that plays. But, I mean, there's no question that I, that first visit week or that first junior day on the 26th is going to be huge for Oklahoma to get those guys in front of these kids and really start to make up some of that ground. Because, like I've talked about before, I, I know people think, oh, it's so long till next signing day. Roy Manning and Brian Odom are already starting out behind the eight ball. Same with Alex Grinch. They're going to have to play a lot of catch up with some of these kids. Uh, I, I mean, just in terms of, let's talk a little bit about just just the, the players on this team. I mean, uh, obviously there are some positions that did not react well. Safety being one of them. Uh, Alex Grinch coming in as a safeties coach. You've got you know the signing class pretty much taken care of from the safety position. What is it? I mean, how do you guys kind of see? And Eddie, let's start with you. Kind of, where do you see being guys that can make the biggest jumps, or, or or need the need the change of having a new coach? Well, I'd start out at cornerback, just as far as if they can be taught to turn their head around. Which I think that every player on the team is capable of turning his head around as he runs. I maybe maybe I'm being fooled, but I think that they're athletic enough to do that. So you uh, think that oh, you just happen to recruit. Guys the, that can't turn their head. The as only run. guys that were that talented yet also could not turn their head around. That'd be something, wouldn't it? Uh, the other, I mean, the, I, I think the most uh, interesting part of this, and it's been discussed probably on the board as well, is uh, what do they do with Buki? Do they turn him back yeah. over into a cornerback? And I think that <laughs> I think uh, one of the, somebody had said that if uh, they didn't do that. The entire shafts should be fired, and they just start again until you keep ro- keep going until back. Someone comes until says, somebody moves Mookie into cornerback. Yeah. But I mean, I, that's a no brainer to me. And I think that if you do that, then you can start really looking at okay, how does how does everybody work into the uh, into what they want to do? It, it is going to be interesting, though. It's like you know, I a guy like a um, oh, I don't know, I. What about Robert Barnes? I mean, yeah, I Robert think Barnes is a good there. example. Right. Yep. Is a good a good place to start, and then you start working your I way. I mean, the down. way like, his season ended. I mean, and the injury honestly, stuff a lot that of these had. guys might just need a breath of fresh air and yeah. getting some new eyes on them. Uh, you know, the one of the a guy that would fit that mold for me is Parnell Motley. I mean, he's made yeah. plays before, but at the same time, I just think that the kid was worn down. He was either being coached wrong, or he was getting worse as a football player. And I mean, you can argue which one has come first. But, I mean, what's the one thing that we kept going back to even in October when Mike Stoops was let go was the fact that you, the longer you stay in this program, and especially in the secondary, the worse you get as a player. And I think they need to address that and see what, what, what is the biggest change they need to do. And, I, hell, I'd be interested just to talk to Alex Grinch to see what his thoughts are. I mean, I don't think he's going to throw Kerry Cooks under the bus. I'd love to say that or love to hear that Alex Grinch stand up there on Friday or whenever we talk to him and say, They've been taught shitty technique for the last five years. I you know, look. I, here's what will happen. And we're going to talk to Alex Grinch probably by the end of this week. Um, probably on Friday will be a chance that that's kind of the plan right now. Um, I I definitely think he's going to say, look, I'm going to look at a lot of different things during spring practice and make a decision and go from there. And I, I you know, there if they have any brains, which I know they do. 
I think they'll try and, you know, Buki a little bit at corner during the spring football period. They'll try, uh, you know, Justin Broyles back at nickel or corner. I don't think Justin Broyles cannot play safety. He just can't play safety. He's not big enough to play safety. Well, I think the one thing that they would do during the spring especially is they don't have, you know, talking as a coach, we don't have a depth chart going into spring. Oh, sure. Yeah. You guys make the depth chart. Yeah. These are, you have three brand We're gonna new coaches watch you on practice. that side of the ball. We're going to go watch you practice. You're going to compete, and then we're going to decide who goes where. What about, what about moving Trey Brown to, to safety? To safety, yeah, or, or a full time nickel. nickel? Full full time nickel. I could buy nickel. I, he's the only guy in that secondary I feel good about, and I'm going to move him away from the position I know he can play. Yeah, he's the that, only that's, one that's that really scares me about truly that. competes, even after the catch is made all the yep. way to the ground. Yep. He's the only guy on that defense. Uh, the, the the problem, and you guys know, I I Buki, Buki is a corner to me. But when I talk to people, I mean, and even you know, over the last few weeks, there is a feeling that this defense is could be really talented and could be good if it gets pointed in the right direction. But everybody I talk to, and I know you guys hear the same stuff. Safety scares the crap out of everybody. Yeah, it like, should. There is no obvious answer. They they need one of these freshmen to step up and be a guy. And that's why they needed Proctor or Dex. Yep, Th- those two it, losses. It was so are easy just, to see. You needed one of them. Yep, those are just catastrophically painful. And all moms. the all the guys that they've lost to either A and M or LSU over the last few years. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't even remember their names. I just know they're all six foot two and There's a lot of guys that they that Alex pounds. Grinch was coaching last year that Oklahoma has recruited yeah. and missed out Okuda, on. Kuda, yeah. Pryor, yeah. Maybe he could kidnap someone. <laughs> can Can you imagine him showing up that first day and being like? Th- these are the safeties I'm more like, because you know that I mean they, Ohio State had nothing but five stars and elite DBs and the best of the best guys, and then he's like, "This is what's here." Like you know, what, I, you know he's going to be in shock. You know what though? I mean, like you watch when teams play against really good offenses, whether it's Alabama against OU, like uh, Sertain got worked by C.D. Lamb, and uh, it, against Clemson. Even their guys that are declaring early, a lot of them got worked. I mean, like, when you play against a really good offense that has really good receivers, you're not going to look good all the time. But the, the thing with Oklahoma is just look good against Iowa State. Like, don't look embarrassing against West Virginia. Iowa State, at least Iowa State had Hakeem uh, Hicks. Hakeem Butler. Or Butler, Butler I mean. Yep. Who's Hakeem Hicks? I think that's the receiver for the Giants, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Hakeem Butler. Hakeem Nix. Played at North Car- Hakeem Nix. Yeah, played yeah, North Carolina. Nix, that's right. Yep. That's uh, don't get your ass kicked by Kansas. Yeah. And I know that a lot of that was done on the ground against Kansas, but still, I mean, the point remains, like, when you play a shitty team, you need to at least bat down a couple stop, balls. Yeah, stop getting worked by TCU's I don't even backup care if quarterback. You, I don't even care if you shut down a team. Just bat down a couple balls, and that'll give half the fan base a boner. But the other half are women. So it'll give everyone a bone. And their tits will be hard. <laughs> How about that? Uh, no, but I mean, look, you're going to get beat in this league. It's going to happen. Are, yeah. and th- I think that's the thing that everybody understands. But when you give up 700 yards repeatedly yeah. every week yeah. and 450 yards to a third string quarterback in Ames, it's like, come on. At some point, like we joked about it uh, after the – I think on after the uh, Orange Bowl on the way back to the hotel, but like oh, you had to lead the league in the country in balls defended that were never touched, and like it became just like a almost a cliche thing to say that he was in position. Yeah, he just didn't make a play. It was like well, the, it goes all the way back to the Jordan G- Thomas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like it had become an epidemic. If you played in the secondary, you put yourself in decent shape, and I guess that is good technique. But the ball skills and when the ball came and it came time to make a play. They just couldn't do it, and I don't know. I don't like, understand how that went, happens. It even went to the next level against Alabama uh, when the safety came over the top and was ready to make the play. You had two guys barely miss the pass. That what the second biggest yeah. play from Tua? Yeah, to Jerry Judy. Yeah, I just don't understand how that happens. I don't know. It, it's just that's. I guess that's for. Uh, but I mean, Roy they happen Manning so many Alex different Rich ways. Like out. I mean, uh, like Trey Norwood, Tylen Wallace, like that was. One of the most embarrassing performances by a DB in recent years. Uh, you know, it wasn't so much Parnell Motley, but everybody against Hakeem Butler, like you said. 
uh, Buki against West Virginia. I mean, that was as bad as it gets. I mean, it just, just goes on. He never around. saw the field again. Yeah, I mean, it, it just In goes on role. every every game. That was I just mean, straight up a guy getting ran by, though. I mean, like, that was a... I don't know if that was a technique thing or if well, that was what was happening to Trey Norwood doing. and Tylen Wallace. Oh then, yeah, you have Barnes go out because of Jacobs, and then Patrick Fields plays the rest of that game. I yeah, mean, Buki never saw the field again in the sec- in the secondary. Well, you know what? Give Patrick Fields a look because that defense wasn't terrible after Robert Barnes left. He had eight tackles. And I thought they were screwed against Bama. He's just another guy that's just so small. So I mean. I think Cradell's the only guy that can really add any significant size to that secondary unless Barnes is healthy and ready to go. And the other thing is Trey Norwood, if he's going to be a factor, he better put on some weight this this offseason. I mean, we, so, we're around the guy a lot. Like, I, he's just so with that skinny. frame, it's it's tough. Just with that frame, it's going to be tough. I When you're so skinny that your pants sag even though you have pads it's, it's on, not, in them? It's not style. It's not good. That's not for style. And it's going to be where... Manning and Grinch, I don't know what they're going to do this first year dealing with all Cooks' guys. Just like we said, Cooks had that same problem when he had to deal with guys that he he didn't want. We'll see if they can do anything with these smaller guys, if Grinch and Manning are able to make them still useful. You know, it's it's funny to say that, but at the same time, all the guys that are in Norman right now, and particularly in the secondary that Cooks recruited, were guys that everybody wanted. I mean, they were highly ranked guys. Just yeah. about using them right. It's just, yeah. I mean, they are. But you know what? You could say the same thing about Alabama, and they were, for a secondary, for them, they were average this year. Yeah. And that's why they got, that's why Trevor Lawrence picked them apart. James Maiden is out there. I mean, everybody wanted him. How big is Isaiah Simmons? Kid from Clemson. Wasn't, I know, right? To play safety? Like, that kid, he just seems to be a a football player. (laughs) Their linebacker was really good, that number 12. The Muse kid? Yeah, I I don't know what his name is, but. The, he was guy number twelve. I think that I think it, a black that was, dude. I think that was Muse. No, that wasn't Muse. I don't know. They they just I don't know. It it's got they'll to the be, point though, and they'll I be say, screwed once Brent Venables' kids playing though. You think? I'm just messing around because because they eat McDonald's. Is that going to be the uh, the jumping off point? The like, people well, who wanted to politicize oh that thing are you just end it. All right. There's probably a good chance if you wanted to politicize something like that, that you find a reason to bitch about hires like Oklahoma just made. No, I think it's more you're you're even I mean, like and when I saw that quote that was going around from Trevor, it was attributed to Trevor Lawrence. So good. I was like, if you any if I see one, I I started not just unfollowing people on Facebook. I unfriended them if they put that on their on their Facebook page. And said, "Yes, finally, someone speaks out." That was so like, good. You are too stupid to be my friend on Facebook. That was so good. I, I like really, it does, really it enjoyed did it. Did really help me weed out the simple jacks in my timeline. I, I have a strict no policy rule. If you are, you are, excuse me, no politics rule. If you are talking politics on my Facebook, we are no longer friends on Facebook. So you you don't unfollow the nice way. You just unfriend them. I unfriend. I want it to be known that just I don't want your politics in my life. Like just nobody cares about what you have to say. Nobody cares what I have to say. Like it's not this isn't this isn't me being better. This is face seriously, Facebook is is a bunch of people that used to be in college and now post pictures of their children all the time. We don't need your fucking politics. They, they, wow, Josh just feels really Whoa. strongly about that. Yeah, politics is a thing that I'm just like, shut up, stop talking, no one cares. I feel like what you really wanted to say is those are your friends that you used to see doing blow in college, and now they're posting pictures of their kids. Oh, sure. There, there's a good doubt. There's a good bad of that. Yeah. Okay. There, there's a lot of uh, very, very morally correct people that I know were very morally corrupt at one one point in time. Like, so. I, do, I definitely remember our senior trip to Tijuana, and I remember what you did. Yes, that damn donkey show. <laughs> Kill anybody? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean the whole that's that's going to be a mess for them to work through, and it's going to take fifteen. It's pr- they probably wish they had more than fifteen practices. Alex Grinch will by the time spring football is over. I'm curious how many times we'll talk to Alex Grinch during spring football. Okay, how many times? How many times, including our first introduction press conference? We want to set an over under. Like from 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 now from, until the start of the football season. How many times? Are we how many times? Scrunch? I would say less than four. Where do you 
including pretty good during the spring. Including the spring game. So we know we have two. Yeah, we have yeah. the introduction, mm -hmm. and then we know we'll get them after the spring yeah, game. Yeah, I would say four is right. That's the good over-under. That's the over-under? Yeah. Let's say four and a half okay. to, to, to make it more interesting. <laughs> so I would go under. I would, I would, I would probably go under. Yeah. Yep. And that's including... No, a third time would be at uh, Lincoln Riley's uh, golf. Well, that's... We're going to say that will be uh, that will be start of the year. You know what the biggest relief is going to be for, I think, everyone, media, him, football, Lincoln Riley, is that Ruffin McNeil no longer has to represent the defense with the media. Because yeah. that was just painful. Well, it just kind of is what it is. Do we want to talk about Ruffin McNeil and him staying on staff? Because I know that's well, we been have a point to, yeah. of contention with a lot of people. The way that I see it is I'm not there every day. But when you talk to, obviously, at practice, we're never we're not there every day because we can't be. But, Ruffin's not there every day. <laughs> Touche. When you hear the players talk about him, though. They love him. You hear Lincoln talk about him. Lincoln obviously wants him around the football offices. Now, yes. I understand that you could say, well, you could do that in an analyst role. I don't want to get into that. It could be a salary thing. I, who I To be honest, I don't care about yeah. that. But I do think that Lincoln Riley wants to keep him around for, 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 for a reason that maybe I don't know about. He obviously brings something to that defense or to the defensive room that he wouldn't keep him around if he didn't think he would, right? Right. Look, I look at it this way. Uh, Lincoln Riley, and, I, and it's not even an OU type thing. There's, a, there's different levels to this. Lincoln Riley, when Mike Leach got fired at Texas Tech, the only reason he is here is because of Ruffin McNeil. He would never have gone on in his career arc. He, he might have become a great offensive coach and offensive mind. He probably would have. But he would have done it a lot differently. He would have had to, you know, go be a GA somewhere probably. Uh, he, he would have had to hope to maybe get a QC job somewhere. I mean, to get on the field as a coach, as one of what used to be nine assistants, it's like winning the lottery. It's, it's almost impossible. So what Ruffin did, giving him that offensive coordinator job at ECU, saved his coaching life. It really did. And it, it, for a guy that was 26, I think he was, when that happened, it was unheard of. But Ruffin saw something in him, and it has really changed the landscape of college football. And because Ruffin did that for him, I kind of see what he's doing now. Like with Brian Odom having very little coaching experience, mostly you know GA stuff and, and, and strength and conditioning stuff and administrative stuff I think he did at Arizona under Mike. Like he's saying, okay, I, you know, my guy believes in you, even though you don't have the experience. I didn't have the experience at one time, but you're young, you're you're passionate, you you're energetic. Let's let's give it a go. Let's see how you do. And it's the same with Alex Grinch. I mean, he hasn't been. He's not. He's not this long tenured guy. So Lincoln's finally kind of getting to to build, you know, or develop. Let guys develop the way that he did, which maybe he didn't deserve a chance. But you saw something that was there that was brilliant, and he's going to now he has that in Alex Grinch. He has that in Brian Odom. Uh, I'd say you have that a little bit in Roy Manning. Um, but Ruffin is the reason that he's here. Why everyone is going to why be everyone there. is going to be. He's the reason that you have Lincoln Riley in the first place, OU fans. So to sit and rail against Ruffin and call him horrible names, it's just not right. It. The only question I have about Ruffin is the salary. Do you think it stays, or do you think he gets a bump, or do you think there's a little decrease, but they don't try to pull, you know, they don't try to make a big deal about it because he's changing titles? I bet he stays associate head coach, just to, just because he will. I mean, look, I think there is an exit strategy eventually, but this is his third year. I mean. Is it his third year? Be his third season. Yeah, yeah. this will be his third year. So, you know, the things that he can do, and and I'm sure these guys, as young as they are, they kind of need someone that's been through all this stuff to to, to kind of bounce things off of and say, hey, you're not, you're, you're getting out of your lane a little bit. 
And I, th- I think that that's something that this program needs, and not so much the players, but even Lincoln Riley. I think he needs that because as cool and calm and collected and together as he is, he's still a relatively young coach. I mean, this is – That's the other thing is, like, you listen to Rough and Talk or whatever, it's like, oh, this guy's, like, 75 or something. And, and he's, he's 60. He's 60, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he, I mean, he's still – and that's why I was it's so surprised. because he's usually sweating when he's talking to you. Yeah, or, like, blocking – with his big ass towel, like a John Cheney kind of <laughs> kind of deal. It, it that's why when his name was uh, floated out about a month ago for the Appalachian State head coaching job, I was like, that's kind of surprising. Like I I kind of figured he was done after this, but I mean, it is what it is. I he's going to be around. There's a reason why they want to keep him around, and yeah. I, I honestly I think that there's a lot of that kind of what you're saying. There, I think that being the father of the program type deal, that a guy that can. You know, when they do, when they need a shoulder to cry on, which I'm kind of, kind of pussies if you do that, but if it, they need somebody like that in that role, though, I think. No, you're not, you're not going to cry on Bill Beatenbow's shoulder. I can tell you that. Yeah. You need a good cop. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yep. I mean, like, there's guys like, you know, I think Mike had a special relationship with guys like Oboe that kind of developed that and could handle him. And eventually they get through that tough exterior and they start making plays and then. They it be, takes kind of a become while. one of his guys, yeah. But you also need someone to where half your team doesn't want to quit half the time. That that can kind of baby him and coddle him and get them through that until they mature. So I think rough. That's a that's an important part to play. That's the Kenneth Murray. That's the Buki. Right. I mean, that's why you hear those guys speak so highly of of Ruffin. They're don't. The, he's the one helping them get through that early part of the process. And I'm going to be curious. Just you know, Brian Odom. Being that he's a younger guy, I mean, like, I used to love watching Brent Venables coach during practice because he was a psycho. I mean, like, he would be out there like he was making. There would be time. I think there were a couple of times when he actually hit someone so hard in their helmet that he was bleeding and he'd just keep coaching. But, like, Brian Odom's going to be a guy that's going to be out there. He's going to be in Kenneth Murray's face. He's going to be, he's going to be running around right next to him. I mean, Tim Kish coached hard, but to have a young guy out there, I'm curious how that's going to have an impact on these linebackers and Caleb Kelly, too. And what are they going to do with Caleb Kelly? That might be the biggest to, question. Is what Deshaun White, yeah. Kenneth Murray, that whole, that whole group. It will be interesting. I mean, they obviously, there's going to be a lot of question marks on the defensive side of the ball, but, you know, particularly at some of the position battles, I, I think that, you know, defensive line for the most part is probably going to iron itself out. I, I am interested to see what Michael Thompson can bring to uh, bring to the fold and, and things like that. Yeah. But it is going to be interesting to see: do they move people around? Who wins the job? Like right now, if you had to ask me, I Deshaun White's going to put give everything Kenneth Murray wants at the middle linebacker spot. I mean, we are now what fourteen? I guess twenty eight games into. Uh, Kenneth Murray's career, would that be mm-hmm. right? Yep. Like, at some point, you can't just keep saying the kid's still trying to learn the position. At some point, he has to start making plays and taking the right uh, path to the ball, or he's just not going to get it. I mean, as much as he watches film, if he just doesn't get the position, that's not a knock on him, but you've got to move him then. you got to make, right. make that transition. White seems like a guy who's been bred for this spot his entire career, going back to high school. Perfect time to try to make that type of move during the spring. Yeah, you could automa- You could almost instantly make yourself better at two positions if Deshaun is what everybody says he is at Mike and then Murray can move to Will where his athleticism becomes even more useful and he doesn't have to be the guy constantly taking on a guard and that kind of stuff. You can work him out in space a little bit. But again, some of it's going to be due to how Grinch wants to deploy this defense, how they want to want to be I I think Murray has to be as excited as anybody in this defense because this is going to be go chase the ball like go we're not there's not as much read or react they want to attack gaps they want to get in the backfield that's where Murray's at his best what what was it the second game of the year against um when he had that great game he really played well Um, 30 tackles against Army but they were all five yards down the field the Bruins yeah Bruins um, he played really well who was it? UCLA. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, he, I thought he had maybe the best game of his career, and they really were. And you look at it, I think he had like three and a half tackles for loss. I mean, he was coming downhill and making plays 
kind of wide and out in space. And I think that was that's where he's at his best. And like I said, I think that will move could be really interesting for him. I'm almost afraid to talk too much about quarterback stuff. I think, uh, it, I think this is worth it. I think it's worthy. But, you know, the Jalen Hurts news, we're waiting uh, still to find out exactly. We're going to stay live until he announces. <laughs> it's, this it's could all, be a nine-hour podcast. It's all going to be old. <laughs> good, luck, you good, luck, uh, good luck editing this one. And, Josh, you can throw out there kind of what your reporting was uh, late last night, early this morning on, on Jalen Hurts. Yeah, you know, the thing, I, and I guess you have to start with what's interesting, is that Miami seems to think it's Miami and Oklahoma. Maryland seems to think it's Maryland and Oklahoma. They don't. Neither one of them think the other has any role, but do think Oklahoma's involved. If you look at recruiting, generally when that happens, it's not coincidence that there's one school always involved. I, I think that, if you're going to read into any good signs for Oklahoma, I think that's it. Now, as far as some of the conversations I had, I was told that when Mike Loxley took the job at Maryland, he, he was given a pretty clear indication from Jalen Hurts that he wanted to follow him to Maryland and was going to play his senior year after his grad transfer at Maryland. Now, we know and we've reported that from what we've gathered, Jalen Hurts gave Oklahoma a very strong impression when he was on campus Saturday. Um, I, I don't know if we want to go into how deep we, we've heard, but, I mean, it sounded like there, there was kind of a wink and a nod. Um, now, what I have been told is that Jalen has a really close relationship with Loxley, who, you know, I know a lot of OU fans won't understand this or, you know, understand how a guy could choose Maryland. There's a long existing relationship. Mike Loxley is a absolute dynamic recruiter, one of the best in the country. He develops relationships very, very well. So I, that that's a big part of this that's hard to see on paper why you would make this choice, but that's part of what's going into this. Now, on the flip side, I'm told that his father – uh, who is a Texas high school coach, was Jalen's coach in high school, is very much in Oklahoma's camp. And I think you're kind of getting a deal where maybe they're having to talk it out, see if they can come to some kind of mutual understanding, or if, if maybe just one or the other is driving the bus on this decision. Um, and it was now, understood by us ahead. that it was understood by us, uh, Artavius, I believe his father's name is, um, that, that he was the one that was seeking out Oklahoma a while ago. We've talked about that on the pod, but like, it's clear that Oklahoma was a school that his father had targeted for his son specifically. Yeah. Th that was absolutely the impression I'd gotten. I know you had too. And, uh, in some of your conversations. So, I mean, like I said, I, I, from what I, I don't hear Miami that that's not the talk I'm hearing now. I, I had even heard that maybe that the connection between Hertz and Enos wasn't quite as strong as some people were making it out to be. Uh, I think it's very interesting what the Tate Martell news does to um, to the Jalen Hurts situation, and maybe at this point I have to give Eddie his mandatory Tate Martell segment. Um, Do it, Eddie. It's just disappointing. I thought we I, we were so close to uh, starting the podcast with his sister, and now it looks like they're headed to South Beach, which. You know, for my man Tate, I think there couldn't be a better marriage than my, the University of Miami and Tate Martel. Like, he will probably go to class without a shirt on every day. The, okay, there's no way that doesn't go down in flames, right? Uh, that feels like set up for disaster. I don't like, know. Like, is there I mean, any better... Uh, well, here's the thing. Is, is, is Tate, was Tate Martel pretty overrated coming out of high school? Is that just where we are with this whole thing, or I don't did he know. not get a fair shake in Columbus? We well, was going to be the quarterback really until Phil like, I mean, how, showed up, and it, it is kind of surprising that he just basically ran away from Fields. Like that's how Fields it appears. Must scare the shit sure. out of him. Yeah, yeah. What do you think the guys in Miami who clearly like are going to know Justin Fields are going to have connection? There's a lot of Georgia and Miami recruit a lot of the same players. And they no doubt saw Tate Martell talk all that shit. And then the second field showed up, he was like, I'm gone. That's not going to earn you a lot of credit in that locker room. Tate Martell's default setting is talk shit, though. Yeah, I, it is. He's got, Bu he got uh, Bubba Bolin c coming with him. So, you know, Bubba's going to have his back. Yeah. Well, and they've got the, the Brevin Jordan kid that he played in high school with. Um, the tight end that's a good player. So, I mean, is it, is it Jordan? Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. And here's yeah, yeah. the thing. I mean, you can say, well, 
even though he lost his coach, he still kept his offensive coordinator and he became the head and the offensive staff was intact. And it doesn't matter. As long as the NCAA has granted one waiver over a coaching change, they're kind of held to the same standard regardless. Of what. So there is a, there's a pretty good chance that he's going to end up getting a waiver. My, my biggest problem for Tate getting that waiver is going to be his mouth. <laughs> because he spouted off all that stuff after everyone knew Urban Meyer was leaving, and then Justin Fields showed up and he's like, "Oh yeah, co- coaching change. It's a big problem for me." I'm sure. Big, big. I'm sure Tate Martell's dad or somebody found out about that. Uh, I can. I would love to have heard the phone call when his dad calls, like, "Yeah, uh, Justin Fields is going to apply for a waiver and he's probably going to get it. So you're going to compete against him next year for the job." Yeah, the the kid that some people thought was better than Trevor Lawrence. Good luck with that, Tate. And I like I, I Tate is a good football player. He is, but he ain't Justin Fields. Yeah. It it really is like a free agency right now. It's like the Wild Wild West, I love the it. portal. I mean, I do too. I I thought it was a lot of fun over the weekend. I know that you guys were busting you, your you ass. But here. <laughs> I was in Scottsdale and I was sitting by a pool or out on a golf course just. Kind of taking it all in. I'm and, sure it was fun, drunk in Scottsdale, <laughs> looking at all the, <laughs> the the moms in their bikinis. It had to be rough for you. See, it was seeing that house you were staying in. I was jelly. It was a nice house. Mm. So, yeah, but I mean, still not okay. You know, I and I looked at all the names in the portal the other day. And this is like people are like, oh, I don't like this, all this. Like, this stuff was happening before the portal came about. It's just now it's official. And it's never going to be like basketball, because basketball's like, okay, some guy from uh, ODU transferred to, you know, it's like Wichita State guys become, like, big-time transfer options. And they weren't playing Wichita State, but, like, Power 5 teams program, you know, Power 5 programs want them. Like, you're never going to have guys from Alabama chasing after someone that just wanted to transfer from Wake Forest. I mean, every once in a while, yeah, but it's not going to be an epidemic. Because most of these guys know that you don't have to be at Alabama to get noticed or to be a first-round pick. Like, if you're a great player, finish out your time at Wake Forest and go be a draft pick. Like, you you don't need to go to Alabama to do that. I mean, there's like, you know, like Darian Daniels from OSU transferred to Nebraska, but that's because his brother was there. Um but the Tate Martell and the Justin Fields and the Austin Kendall, those are the outliers. Those are the, you know. Isn't quarterback just the out, out, yeah. outlier? I mean, because those are the high, I mean, every quarterback's high profile because even if he's not playing, all the fans want him to play, so they turn him into uh, almost like a celebrity and, you know, without ever doing anything in college. Well, how much is Austin Kendall living off Baker Mayfield, Lincoln Riley, and Kyler Murray currency right now? By the way, like he, he was at Oklahoma. He's got to be good. Something really interesting that's out there right now. Uh, Jake Trotter had reported it with ESPN. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma is trying to use the you can't transfer to other schools in the Big 12, even with the graduate thing. So he can't go to West Virginia. They're trying to say if he goes to West Virginia, uh, per Big 12 conference rules, he has to sit out, even though he's eligible. And that'll be a bad look, especially TCU and uh Kansas State, yeah, with, with uh, Delton, yeah, with that just happening for the Sooners to not do it, it's going to look bad. I, I'll say this: I, I posted if, on the board. If they don't, if they get Jalen Hurts, they'll probably just say, uh, "Okay, we're fine. He can play." <laughs> That'd be funny if that's how it happened. That, that would be. <laughs> but don't then you it, think that that's what they're doing though? They're hedging their bets until they know. I think it's a little bit of that. I also think that, well, my God, if if they get Jalen Hurts and they still. Try and enforce that I think rule. That yeah, they you're going to look like just because of your look. Your, 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 there's bad you, you blood. A, there's bad blood, and there's a, a chance that you have to play West Virginia twice. Now, I you could argue you could play him four times. You could argue like, how there's many how years. Much, there's no way Austin Kendall is coming back to Oklahoma that's, now. Right. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Oh, no for way. sure. Yeah, for sure. That that's that that bridge is burned. Yes. That's why I don't get why the Jalen Hurts things ma- matters to the equation. He's not coming back. Like, you're not going to lose out on Hurts and be like, you know well, what, Well, not Austin, now. We were wrong. Well, even, like, as soon as OU expressed interest in Jalen Hurts, I I have a lot of trouble believing that Austin Kendall was ever – Yeah. because, I mean, it was clear they didn't think he was the guy. They didn't think he would be able to do what they needed him to do. And, I, you know, I don't I – don't, I don't blame them because, I mean, they have to do what's best for the program. 
But I also don't blame him for being like, man, I don't know that I ever even got a, a fair look in this deal. Yeah, I'll go, so, go back to my Twitter stalking. As soon as I saw Lincoln not following Kendall, because it takes a lot for Lincoln to unfollow someone. The only time I remember him doing it almost immediately was Cameron Rising because he was pissed off when, when that went down. But once he unfollowed Kendall, okay, he's, he's, he's done. That's it. Moving on. Did Cam Rising find a landing spot? Was He's it visiting Cal? Utah this weekend? He visited oh, Utah. Utah over the weekend, okay. I believe. That'd be a hell of a get for Utah. I still am a huge Cam Rising fan. I think that kid is crazy underappreciated. And the fact that Texas couldn't find a way to keep him happy baffles me. That's not Herman's MO. He's not about keeping people happy, especially quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Bouchelle's in the portal. Rising's in the portal. Casey Thompson, we don't know. But I mean, Thompson's in the hell, portal. Is he in the portal? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yeah. is. So he has yeah. three quarterbacks in the portal. Is Bouchelle yep. in the portal? Did I miss that? Wait, yeah. When did that happen? Sorry. Is he not in the portal? I don't think so. Mm-mm. I was I talking to somebody today like like he was transferring? Most people assume because he could be a grad transfer just like Jalen and Kendall. Okay. So he's not officially in the portal. It's just we're wondering or waiting. He's waiting know. until all the big fish have have cruised through and then he's going to jump in and he might be waiting to see what happens to roshan johnson too how how good he he that he looks right off the bat i wouldn't have that worry if i was him after seeing him at under armor Ro, roshan johnson's gonna need some time so yeah i mean but we kind of started out talking about the portal but, but yeah the kindle thing is just it's amazing that that relationship just fell apart like in a week and it, i'm sure it was not great to begin with but like we said it was a week ago when we started figuring out that oh you had genuine interest in Jalen Hurts it just seems like as soon as that happened boom the whether it was his family or him but any any kind of underlying you know relationship problems that were there they all bubbled to the surface awfully fast you look at that Not first pig. some of Lincoln Riley's first big guys in that first class he was on in on haven't gone all that well for Oklahoma Abdul Adams Lincoln, uh, Lincoln, right? Austin Kendall and A.D. Miller. He had a big role in closing A.D. Miller there at the end. And literally all three have transferred in the last year. Yeah. And that, I'm not putting that on Lincoln Riley. I'm just saying it's funny how those things work because, like, Kendall especially gave him a lot of cred- credibility early on as a recruiter because he went and, you know, basically took him out of the SEC area. Yeah, he committed Tennessee, looked like he was mm-hmm. going to stay there, and then it all changed when Lincoln got hired, and Lincoln didn't want Shane Bouchelle because I know Josh, that's who I assumed was going to be the 2016 quarterback, was Shane. Oh, and, sure. Yeah, and I remember Lincoln, sitting on yeah. the sideline watching Shane with Josh Heupel. So that, that and, you know, I don't, I never saw – oh, that's not true. I saw Austin at the uh, at an All-American game um, his senior year, but I, I didn't think – I'm not second-guessing Lincoln Riley because I didn't think Shane Bouchelle was the guy. So I, I, I don't have a problem with that choice. It just didn't work out. Uh, want to remind you guys, uh, Coop Works, great sponsor of the show. Uh, go check them out, Uh You can go to your local liquor store, even in the region. Uh, if you're in Oklahoma or surrounding states, go check out their website, Uh They've got seven year-round uh, uh, beers and then four seasonals. So always a great uh, beer, uh, no matter what kind you drink. I mean, if you're if you're a dark beer guy, you're a uh, amber guy, you're a, a, a the horny toe blonde is my favorite. Eddie is a big IPA guy. He loves the F5 IPA. Uh, Native amber I, I really enjoy as well. But go check it out. Uh, give them a try. It will totally change your view on uh, beers if you're just really just like a Bud Light, Coors Light guy. Uh, it'll show you what a really high-quality uh, beer is. And also, if you guys uh, are out there drinking, getting ready to watch your Thunder game, whatever, uh, send us a pic on social media, and we'll uh, retweet you uh, with uh, and tag Coop Works in it, too. So CoopLWorks.com. Go check them out. Great sponsor of the show, and uh, great to have them on. Uh, so Josh, oh, you had their, you know, coaches now can get out on the road. Dead period's over. Oh, you had their, uh, recruiting weekend last weekend or Bob, whoever you want, whoever wants to jump in here, uh, talk a little bit about just kind of what went on last weekend, who came in, some eyeballs went out, 
uh, all that kind of stuff. But uh, OU trying to land a few here before the final signing period. Josh, why don't you take the offensive lineman and I'll take uh, Ty. Sounds great. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the two uncommitted players that were there were Danielson E.K., the offensive lineman from Kansas City, uh, Rockhurst High School, uh, and Enoch Vamahi from Hawaii was also in town. Now, E.K. came in, was kind of a late invitation, really seemed like almost a direct correlation between Bobby Evans announcing he was going to the NFL and E.K. getting invited to come in. And that he was the guy that always kind of seemed like the flex on the offensive line in this offensive line class, whether they were going to be able to take him or not was going to depend on who all went pro. And since both possibilities did, I think they found a spot for him. He's a guy that I get the impression Oklahoma really likes. I think the visit went extremely well. I think Oklahoma is in fantastic shape here. I've talked to him. He still kind of wants to wait maybe a couple of weeks to announce anything. Does, does he still want to make those, those other visits he was talking about? <sighs> He kind of has hedged on that a little bit since I've talked to him this week. Um, I, it won't shock me if he does, but I, I'll be very surprised if anybody catches Oklahoma. He's had them out in front for a while. I think this visit only furthered that. Uh, it, it seems like Oklahoma is right where they want to be. Um, with Vamahi, he was the guy that I came in thinking, ah, this is going to be tough for Oklahoma. This could be a this is kind of a long shot from everybody I talked to. That visit. Similarly to EK, went very, very well for him. He has since uh, announced that he wasn't. He was planning to announce this week at the Polynesian Bowl in Hawaii. He has delayed that. He's going to wait until signing day. Uh, I guess the February signing day. So we'll have to see what happens there. But I, I like where Oklahoma is with him. He's going to visit Ohio State. I, I get the impression talking to some Oklahoma people that's a that's a real concern. Uh, they think Ohio State's really going to push him hard. So we'll have to kind of see what happens. I think USC is obviously a very real threat just due to their their proximity. They've got a lot of poly players. There's a lot there that makes sense. But Oklahoma has really closed a lot of ground. And I, I think if he picked right now, it might be Oklahoma. But we'll have to see what goes on for the next few weeks. So you think he was looking for a reason to leave the Trojans and the Sooners and Buckeyes are finally giving him one? I think there's something to that, you know, and it was funny because about a month ago I had heard a lot of Notre Dame talk, which was, was kind of interesting to me. I mean, you don't see a lot of poly guys go to, um, to Notre Dame. I mean, there's one that's kind of famous infamous, but, um, you know, it didn't make a lot of sense to me, but now it seemed like USC had really made up a lot of ground. It was interesting because it seemed to happen along the lines of Cliff Kingsbury, and then now that Cliff Kingsbury has stepped out, it seemed like the door kind of swung back open again. So I don't know. I mean, that may just be the timelines. Just it, It's not connected, but it seemed that way. So we'll have to see what kind of happens. But I like where Oklahoma is with him. But and, and I know, you know, the good news for Oklahoma fans is he's out there in Hawaii playing in this poly bowl with guys like EJ and Doma Ogar and Stacey Wilkins. And I guarantee you that Stacey Wilkins in particular has been in his ear. So Oklahoma has someone there recruiting him all week long. And that's that's obviously going to be a positive for OU. Oh, you're talking about that, Josh. I mean, Stacey put up the eyes, I think, was it Monday morning or something of, of, of that nature? I mean, I don't think it means anything when a recruit puts up the eyes. But Stacey did put up the eyes. And it's because he's spending time with them once again and believing that something like this could be possible. As, as we mentioned, the only other recruit that was on an official visit the first time ever is someone that's already signed, Ty D. Armin, finally get, got a chance to see the campus. And it worked out well for him because not only is he signed and he had nothing to worry about throughout the entire visit, but Alex Grinch is going to not only be his defensive coordinator, but also his safeties coach. And he said he spent a lot of time around Grinch Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Really had a good first impression of everything on, on that end. Spent a lot of time watching film with Grinch, trying to figure out exactly where Ty will fit in in the grand scheme of things. And I kind of put this teaser out on uh, Twitter. I asked, what is the direction of the defense under Grinch? He simply said, it is upward. I, I will have a full write-up with Ty later this week. Mostly, I'm just trying to wait for Jalen Hurts to be over so the story doesn't get buried. So we're looking at Thursday or uh, Friday, but I've really enjoyed talking with Ty. And I finally got that question answered that I didn't ask the first time around. How does his family have all that OU gear 
ready for a signing ceremony when it was Arizona State at the beginning of the day. Well, during that whole process, the uh, a couple of the assistant coaches at Arlington went to uh, Rally House and they picked up a bunch of OU gear so that you never would have known in the first place that he was going to initially sign with the Sun Devils. Hmm. It sounds like a recruiting violation to me, but maybe that's just me. And, uh, Josh, I haven't heard anything. There's nobody this weekend, right? That is what I have been told. That that sound, I haven't heard anything. I, I think, I mean, honestly, at this point, there's not there's, a lot left right, to do. Exactly. Yeah, there, there's just not many guys. That It's not just, are we still recruiting guys? There's just not many spaces that I think they don't have earmarked for someone else. They, they need to know, okay, we're going to miss out on this guy before we move to this guy. And really the, the question that continues to linger is what, what's going to happen with David Aguebu. Um, you know, I talked about it last week on the pod, was sent home early from the Army Bowl. I, I want to, again, say it was nothing drastic from everything I've gathered. It wasn't anything that was, you know, he's not going to jail over anything. It's nothing like that. It's just he's had a little trouble in the regular season. I think missed a game or two over that. Seemed to, you know, kind of do the right thing and then got into some trouble at Army. Or the All-American Bowl. I still can't stop calling it <laughs> Army. But it's – and again, so, you know, people are like, well, he's so talented, he's so good. Can you trust the guy? Is he going to be there when you need him to be? Is he going to be at practice? Is he going to stay out of trouble? When he's out of your sight, is he going to do the things he needs to do? I, I will flat out say every time I've dealt with David, he's been upstanding. He's been awesome to deal with. He really, he doesn't come off like a kid that would be a problem. But at the same time, some of these kids are really good at kind of masking that thing. So I, you know, I don't want to say like I know him so well and I'll vouch for his character because I don't. I've been around him several times, and what I've seen has has impressed me. But clearly, he's had a few hiccups along the way. So I think Oklahoma is just trying to make sure he's a guy they can trust. When he tells them he's going to do something, he'll do it. When he, you know, I, I had even heard some talk that maybe um, there, you know, when, when OU went to ask him, you know, what had happened, maybe there was some concerns over what the answers were, you know, like, you know, so well, I don't want to go into too much about that, but it just, you know, Oklahoma wants to make sure this is a guy they can trust and he's going to do what he's supposed to do. And if they're going to miss out on him, then they've got to find another answer because they do need somebody in that role but they're just not sure if it's going to be him or not. Josh, have you talked to any Aggie sources? Was was this a concern on, on their end, or is this sort of news to them too? I, I don't think there was any great concern about it. You know, it was it was funny because the first person I contacted about him not being in the game was an Aggie guy that I know well and was kind of like, you know, are you hearing anything? What happened here? Because it, was, it wasn't even discussed during the game. There was no mention of it. There wasn't like a... A little, you know, and, and the All-American Bowl is pretty good about, you know, giving you the updates and they give you, okay, here's going to be our announcement ceremony during the game. This guy's not going to play because of this, that, or the other. They're pretty good about it, but there was no mention of David Aguebu at all during that day. And it wasn't until afterward I realized that I didn't see him the whole time. And by then, you know, it, it was kind of, it was too late to kind of catch up on what had happened. So I got home, tried to check with some people. And it, it, it was, it was just a, I, I think it caught everybody a little off guard. And again, like I said, he'd had a couple of things during the season, but it wasn't, again, same kind of stuff. Not a huge deal, just, you know, kind of straighten up and fly right and everything would have been fine. But when it happens a couple of times, you start to wonder, okay, is this a pattern? By the time you start a podcast and the time you No end doubt, it, this my is crazy. God, <laughs> just so much stuff happens. So Oklahoma State's kicked three players off of their basketball, basketball team. team. Two of them pretty significant contributors. I know Weathers contributes quite a bit. Well, the the Contravious kid, he got he got arrested early, and they've kind of been holding him back and not playing him as much, and he must have screwed up again. But that they didn't need. Yeah, not that. a good look. Uh, is Lincoln Riley currently taking the first step in? Getting closer to Nick Saban and taking and making a move. <laughs> That's a hey, remember a petty move yeah. and making petty moves. Well, Jason Kersey of the Athletic is reporting that not only is he being um, 
blocked from immediate eligibility at West Virginia, but also any school that they play on their schedule in the next two years, which I didn't even think was possible anymore. Well, uh, he re- he revised it and said that he j- you would just have to sit out. They're blocking him from being a- immediately, immediately eligible. eligible. Well, that's what I, yeah, that's what I said. Oh, okay. But where because he he could transfer to Tennessee, but he'd have to sit out. This neck that that's how it that doesn't make any sense I, to me. I thought they got I'd have rid to look more stuff. into it. It doesn't sound think, right, even when I'm saying it. I've texted him while you guys were talking, and he said he did check into. I mean, I believe him. Mm-hmm. I just it just if that's why is that still possible? It shouldn't still be possible. I get the in conference thing, but I mean, Alex Delton's going to transfer to TCU, and they're going to let him. You think uh, Riley has already sent a text to Hertz? The door's open. <laughs> the door, the door's open. The this lights are on. This is what I'm on. doing for you right now. <laughs> the door's open. The lights are on. Come on, man. You sort of see making it feel just like home. I'm being a dick, just like saving. Like you have a good relationship. You don't care that Kerry Cooks goes to Texas Tech. You burn bridges or whatever happened between Riley Stoops, oh Kendall family. Now we're getting this what feels like pettiness. Time, yeah. time, time again. No, it doesn't. It is. It is pettiness. I mean, that was your first. That was your first quarterback first. recruit. He, he was. And you know what? You lost your second. You kicked him off the team. You are looking like transfer you right now. I was trying to think. Well, who was the last quarterback to stay the whole way? Was it Blake Bell? And he moved tight end. Yeah. I mean, Trevor transferred out to A and M. Justice Hanson is done. Justice Hanson Ar- at Arkansas State had now. a nice career at Arkansas <laughs> State. Do you mean started and finished at Oklahoma? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, it would be Blake, and then before him, it would be uh, Land- it'd be Jones, Landry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Golly, you didn't know what you all had in Landry <laughs> Jones and his loyalty. His loyalty. <laughs> Don't start. Don't start with me, Josh. Hey, he'd have been a high draft pick if he'd come out of for his junior year, Terry. He just got screwed his senior year. The bell dozer. Took all the touchdowns away. Took all them touchdowns. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I, as far as recruiting, I think we're we're good there. Um, you know, signing day, there's going to be some things to watch. And like you said, uh, the eyeballs are out there, uh, even from Lincoln. And we that was really weird because – it could have been so many things when it happened. I mean, it could have been Jalen Hurts. It could have been coaching. could have been recruiting. And we were able to kind of narrow that down pretty quick But um, to, to recruiting. So, you know, outside of that, we're just waiting on the Jalen Hurts stuff and following this. Now, when I started the pod and said that drama is stupid, this is not stupid drama. This oh, is the, awesome this is drama. Petty, this is Petty Wars. This <laughs> no, is the this drama is, that I feed off yeah, of. Yeah, this is the stuff that we you, that you should live for, this not the, the made up. This is the stuff that will get me in a wreck going home to Oklahoma City because I'm checking my <laughs> phone the entire way. <laughs> this, this makes this fun. Like, this makes – like, you last year after the early signing period, I can't speak for Bob, but it was kind of like, well, what do I do now? Like, I, I was just kind of like, there's like four guys to cover. This is right? slow. Well, and now you've <laughs> but pissed, now this is fun. And you've pissed off his family, who now by this time has every phone number of every media member in Oklahoma. So they're willing to just dish now, on everything it, that's least. going on. If, yeah. if you want to get in touch, you definitely can. So everything's going to come out in this thing. Just, I don't know, it... it this kind of also tells you that I don't know. I mean, if you get, do you think Lincoln would do this regardless if he got Jalen Hurts or not? I do. Something happened where that bridge got burnt. That's it. I don't know how close we are to getting out of here, but I just posted something on the board. Um, Jalen Hurts is not the only SEC grad transfer that Oklahoma is going to be involved with. Oh, at quarterback, so, would it be no, offensive not tackle? Not a quarterback. Offensive tackle. A receiver. Receiver. Oh, that okay. one surprised Mr. Josh me. Yeah. With the news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, Is he? Did he just enter the portal? I do not know. Like honestly, I actually yes, he did. He entered yesterday. Okay. So, um, you know, don't want to just gave it to the subscribers. So, you know, you you people out there, it's time to ante up, sign on up. Don't be but, a uh, don't be a poor or a simple jack anymore. Mm-mm. No. Do you, Carrie, do you feel like you've brought that wrath upon us? You brought up Simple Jack, and all of a sudden they've come out of the woodwork. 
It's just, it's 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 in it's happening at an incredible rate. I'm telling you, because there's so much news to go around that if people can't keep if up. you're not connected, yeah. you don't have a clue. Like we are for the connected folk. Like, don't come at it. Like there was a guy today that asked me about if oh you can get back in with Dax Hill. That's a that's a Eddie has made an edict. I'm not. I don't even think we should discuss it. We, it's it's not even an we tell it's Eddie a, it's not to be science. a jerk to people. It's fact. It's pretty good rule. It's it's fact. I'm, if you have less than fifty followers, you're probably a simple jack, and you're not going to respond to them. And I'm not going to respond you're to you. You're not going to answer their question unless I know you. There's there's certain there are certain uh, variables that go into it. Like if I know you, if you're if you're a friend of mine, I have friends that have less than fifty followers. Well, there was one guy that had one follower. And he asked I me think a question. That, and I think that person is fake. And he asked a question, is Jalen Hurts coming to OU? And and Bob's getting the same stuff. And it's like, if we knew it would be in bold letters at the front of our website, it's, and everyone would know. In like, a reply to this one guy, that that's how I'm breaking it. Like, is it? does he think that we're going to DM him and say, hey, look. We're not telling anybody this. I'm only telling you. That's like the, uh, that's like the Jalen Hurts stuff that, like, there's like 70 posts on the board or threads on the board that have anybody have an update if and then they tag us that like, hey, is mods. all that we are concentrated on like if we get information on Jalen Hurts that is worthy of being relayed it's going to be at the we top of the will board tell you. it's going to be pinned it's going to say Jalen Hurts update it's going to say you know 127 p.m. or whatever time and, it'll be and confirmed I don't yeah. we don't like to spread the rumors like there's some stuff we've heard we don't know if it's true so we just let like, literally, the first thing this morning when you woke up, you had an update. Well, everything that we knew about Jalen Hurts. And that hasn't changed since we put that update. Like, I think people just think, like, those those tickers still exist where, like, someone is sending us uh, information about Jalen Hurts and we're just not relaying it because we're lazy. Somewhere there's, like, a Jalen Hurts AP wire. Like, there's just Jalen Hurts coming you know, like in on the, a little fact. The old ticker tapes. I mean, <laughs> like, we just have one of those sitting in an office somewhere that just constantly has Jalen Hurts uh, news coming out of it. Oh, and Bob gets us to, like, this is what recruiting is like. Every, like, got an update on, since, on whoever it is. Since I told you 24 hey, hours oh, ago, Jalen, no. J- let me check the <laughs> check the machine. <laughs> the teletype. No, no, nothing on Jalen Hurts yet. We'll go back to the ticker tape here in just a little bit. The teletype. I'm sorry, Josh, for interrupting you. He's gone. <laughs> oh, I I did. I turned him off. <laughs> I really. It was it, it, Josh. It was either the teletype or Josh. I'm sorry, Josh. I turned you off. I was I was like wow nobody's saying anything here no but no it people if we have something on clearly the biggest story in OU athletics right now we're gonna run it like we'll, we'll have it for you and but I mean at the same time we're not gonna I, I know some people out there are you gonna like regurgitate the same thing over and over and over again and package it a little differently and make it seem like it's new news. It's not. It's the same stuff you've already read, just written a little differently, and they make it sound like it's new news. We're not going to do that. That's not how we've ever operated. When there's something worth reporting, we'll report it. Like, I promise. But, at, like I said, this this constant, oh, there's got to be something new. We could do that, too, but we just, that's that's pointless. That, that never makes any sense to me. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just trying to catch up. Tyler Palmatier from the Norman Transcript has a good point. Uh, Lincoln is so paranoid that this is just the icing on the cake of paranoidness. And sort of par par for the course now with him. Like you would almost be like shocked he doesn't if want he you went to see the other a, way. Yeah, he doesn't want you to see a practice, much less have a guy transfer to another school that has the entire playbook. Maybe I can come around to West Virginia if you think they're going to be good and you could play them twice in 2019, twice in 2020. But the Tennessee thing, I'm I'm not. Or the, if you're on the schedule for the next two years, that one I, I can't come around to now. I mean, they were screwed without Will Greer, but I didn't think that quarterback they played was terrible. He was just rail thin. Yeah. 
That yes. that guy looked like Spencer Rattler out there. He's skinnier than me. <laughs> whoa, he, I don't. Whoa, he whoa. was close. Just a lot Who's taller. That? West Virginia's quarterback. Oh, that, the backup back for uh, Greer. He was running for his life, and he really was had the. He had the build of Bob Prisbillo. Uh, yeah, it. Like I said, and this is one of those things because I know a lot of high school coaches, and it, it kind of they're kind of unrelated, but it's similar. A lot of college or high school coaches hate the early signing period, and they speak out very loudly against it. Ronnie Perkins, his high school coach, is one of the forerunners on this about these kids. Like once they get in, well, they're locked in, but the coaches can do whatever they want, and that's fair. And you're only pouring gasoline on the fire, and you make it's not just about. Austin Kendall, you make it look bad like, oh, well, you know, oh, you just wants their hooks in, and once once they're done with you, they're, they're going to mess you around. Let him go. Let him go do whatever he's going to do. Austin Kendall will not be the reason that you win or lose against West Virginia. Uh, if he was, you wouldn't let him go. It's a quarterback that you're willing to let go. I mean, it's exactly. like. And they're, I mean, they don't have the same talent you do. It's it's stupid, but it's Lincoln. It's that's I'm not surprising in the least. So, all right, fellas, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we will await the Jalen Hurts news. Um, should be coming today. I would be shocked if it doesn't come today. Uh, I'm shocked it didn't come during the podcast. To be honest with you, I'm wrong. But uh, Eddie and I will both be injecting the uh, Austin Kendall, Lincoln Riley drama into our veins I might try and freebase it I don't know how that works <laughs> I don't either I need to look it up I'm glad that you said that uh, actually the only thing I'm glad you said today well other things uh, next I'm not week, ashamed that you said next that. week I'd like to uh, talk about something that I talked we, we spent a lot of time on our trip about uh, mm-hmm. just kind of throwing it out there around the dudes uh, and I'll tease it right here Pronoun wars are coming to America, and I think it's something that from the woke society that we live in, mm-hmm. we need to discuss. Can we have an example? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, there are many people that identify themselves as something else, maybe than a male or female, like some people identify themselves as they, and uh, some people are now using zer or z, and they're, and they're like... Emails, uh-huh. and I think it's something that needs to be talked about because it worries me as a society that we're headed in this direction. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's 2019, but there's there's stuff going on. I don't know if everybody heard it, but Eddie just became an old. It just <gasps> happened. The world's changing. So, like, Jalen Hurts doesn't know what Z wants to do? Like that kind of stuff? Something Stuff like that, yeah. Okay. Just telling you, if you have kids under five, you probably stop needing to calling them by him or her. It's their decision on what they want to be. Okay. This is interesting. It, very. Not at all, but I'm just saying it because I want to get out of here. Um, all right. Well, you're usually ahead of the curve, Eddie, so I'll, I'll cut you some slack. You probably know it better than us, so... All right, uh, thanks for listening to the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant unofficial 40 podcast. Uh, We will be back again next week with more to come with uh, officially official coaching staff, which it pretty much is right now. We'll know exactly who is most likely to be OU's quarterback uh, at the end of spring football, probably more so than we would now. Uh, And we'll also know how much more pettiness Lincoln Riley can throw out into the universe. Uh, Until then... Thanks to Joshua Christian. Thanks to Eddie Radosovich. Thanks to Bob Prisbillo. I am Kerry Murdoch, and we'll see you next time right back here on the Choctaw Casino Resort Unofficial 40 Podcast. All right. Well, it is the emergency pod portion of our podcast. Welcome back. I know we just signed off and said we'd see you next week, but guess what? We lied. Like we always do. It happened again. <laughs> it happened again. Uh, that was a great video, by the way. The snow. Hopefully we'll be able to do another one this weekend. I'm I'm all up in Mike Morgan's screwed this Mike weekend. Morgan's head. I saw he was tweeting at you. Very awkwardly too. It's kinda of creeped me out. 
Uh, okay, so Jalen Hurts, well, first off, Oklahoma, you're welcome. We did a podcast, and of course, huge news broke in the middle of it, or right at the end. Jalen Hurts, through uh, Players Only, Tribune, released a farewell to Alabama that also announced his, uh, f- his future, which is to come to the University of Oklahoma. So Jalen Hurts will grad transfer his way on to Norman, in all the uh, back and forth, all the the worry if we were on track, if we were off track, if we were if we were idiots, if we were if we were figuring it out, he comes to Oklahoma. No, doesn't go to Maryland. Turns down Mike Loxley. Uh, Tate Martell goes to Alabama or to Miami, and so Jalen Hurts ends up at Oklahoma, which I think most people thought made the most sense. And Sooners now, guys, I think we have to say it. Uh, they are once again in position to be considered a college football playoff favorite heading into next year with this one move. Absolutely. I mean, I it's it's incredible that they've recentered themselves after losing what is it now five guys early to the NFL draft off the offensive side of the ball, and there it, it almost seems like they've reloaded now with uh, five well, stars six, with the news. Actually. Well, six with the Kyler's news of yeah, included. that's that's right. I five before Kyler. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's just incredible the way that Lincoln Riley has this thing rolling right now. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I, I just saw that Mike Farrell tweeted. Uh, he was told one of the things that Jalen Hurts wanted most in a transfer school is the chance to play and beat Alabama in the playoffs. Sooners could give him that chance. So, uh, yeah, I, you knew Maryland. I mean, we, we brought that up. Like, yeah, it the, just, he had no the Maryland chance thing with Maryland didn't or make Miami. sense as far as if you want to be a guy that's going to go. Uh, you know, maybe do the NFL or or prepare himself for the NFL. Uh, or just or, look at the last or, or just to win, be relevant. To be, be relevant yeah. in a, his final season in college football. Oklahoma was the play. And, uh, you know, he finessed a uh, a trip to a, a, a prime 112 steakhouse in Miami <laughs> out of uh, the hurricane. And then I think a trip to a, a couple clubs down in the Miami area. But uh, all is well for Oklahoma as uh, it seems like. Lincoln Riley, besides the Austin Kendall thing, which we talked about in the unofficial earlier this afternoon, uh, he continues to win. And, guys, I was thinking about this. Josh, um, the one thing that this program, I think, has missed is a voice of leadership. I, I think we can all agree. Eddie, you and I have been around him all year. This is maybe the weakest year of captaincy that I've seen at the University of Oklahoma. It just it wasn't strong. Yeah, and you know that's something that is going to be interesting because you look at you know just the comments that Le- that Jalen Hurts made after the uh, after the SEC championship game and kind of the way that he carried himself as far as I guess the character that he had to carry himself with even when Tua took over the job yeah. and he basically sat the sidelines all year. Uh, and he you had know, one I think little moment where he actually came out and, and expressed frustration to the media. Yeah, and that kind of got blown out of proportion, I thought, personally. But after that, it just seemed like everything went back to normal and he you know, just played his role that he was supposed to play. But I, my point being, this is a guy that's going to come in and immediately everyone is going to listen to him to say, if he says you're not doing it the right way, yeah. they're going to perk up and say, well, this guy knows what the hell he's talking about. We need to listen. Like, I don't know that you had that with Kenneth Murray uh, or, I mean, Ben Powers was a soft-spoken guy. Did you have that with any of the captains this year? No. I mean, maybe early on when Rodney was still healthy. Uh, ben Powers was decent. But, I mean, we, t- we talked about it after the Texas loss. There wasn't a whole lot of leadership in that uh, locker room. And I think that, you know, this is going to go a long way as far as um, – they just continue to put themselves in the middle of the conversation. I mean, uh, you know, if you even want to, if you want to expand it even to women's gymnastics, you look at the sports in Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, and then I guess if you want to throw in Mackie Nichols for what she's done, mm-hmm. it, they are the center of the conversation in, in the sports world, and they continue to be with uh, the Jalen Hurts. I, that's why I continually have said the brand has never been better for Oklahoma. I honestly thought we would. You were going to take us into a is KJ Kindler the hottest coach on campus talk? Now? Well, if we want to, we can. I I would probably support that facet. <laughs> Although, uh, you know, I I've had some ladies say to me that Alex Grinch has certainly put himself in the center of conversation. I think Diaco was there for a lot of people. Diaco was definitely there. Diaco was a good looking guy. 
but and as we're far all comfortable as, enough to be able to say Does KJ Kindler surpass Sherry Cole? Oh, absolutely. I mean, at some point, winning has to be come has to play uh, <laughs> a role on this as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I told Josh we'd only go about 15 minutes, and now we're getting way off track. Uh, but Josh, just just leadership wise, I mean, look, Jalen Hurts has a chance to do something that you know Baker left, and I wouldn't call him your uh, guy that was really worried about everybody else doing things the right way. He was just a lead by example guy. Like he went out and made plays, and everybody's like, "Damn, that guy's good. I'll follow him anywhere." Like he was kind of a Pied Piper. I think Jalen Hurts can be a guy that really resets the culture of your program. I think there's something to that. And one of my favorite things I ever heard Tom Izzo say, and it's a weird guy to bring up in this conversation, but he was talking about how much he hates the lead by example leaders. He's like, that's not a leader. That's just someone doing what he does. And if you choose to follow him, you follow him. He's like, a leader is a guy that's going to be vocal. He's going to get in your face and tell you you're not doing this right, that we expect more here. I think Jalen Hurts is that kind of guy. I mean, he's a coach's son. Like all the cliches you can come up with, he fits all those molds, and he's a guy that has done it at an extremely high level. He knows what it takes to play for national championships and win national championships. So I think he comes in with instant credibility. I mean, we've you know we've seen it on the, the tweets that we sent out when it happened. I mean, all these players, whether they're ex-OU players, current OU players, the commitments, the signees, you know, whatever, they're all like, oh, yeah, man, we'll, you know, we, we're excited about this because he's he has that kind of credibility, and I can't ever think of a guy that didn't start his final year at where he was that comes in with that kind of currency with his future teammates. But that that's where Jalen Hurts is, and I think he can walk right in and be like, you know, day one, he doesn't have to be a guy that's going to earn his way at the table. They're going to know he knows what it's about and that he can step up and say something if he wants to. Now, this was something I also wrote about uh, back in that piece about why OU would want Jalen Hurts now. Uh, and it goes to Bill Biedenboe, the offensive line. Eddie, you mentioned six guys you're replacing that leave early four of those on the offensive line. Lincoln Riley's going to have to come up with some different things offensively in order to take advantage of some of Jalen Hurts' strengths and weaknesses or, or hide some of his weaknesses. But he is going to be able to... He's the type of quarterback, I think, that's going to be able to kind of uh, help you overcome some of your uh, inefficiencies, inexperience, whatever you want to call it, on that offensive line until uh, they can start gelling midway through the season. Am I wrong? No, I don't think so at all. I, I Sorry, I, I thought, Josh, you were going to chime in. I think it's going to be interesting just as far as like what? I wonder what that sales job was like. I'm uh, surely that came up when they when they brought him in and talking to him as far as you know. This is what we have coming back. This is what you basically. This is what you would have in front of you. Uh, you know, because I I think that they do that on just a normal recruiting trip. I would think that it's even more so for a grad transfer and a guy that's been around the block. I wonder if Alabama. This would be a good question to ask somebody like Aaron Suttles or something like. Did they have a completely different offense for Tua than they did Jalen? Was there a Jalen offense versus a Tua offense? Uh, or were the concepts the same for both quarterbacks? Were they running the same type of offense? They just ran certain plays for Jalen that they didn't run for Tua. So, I, I mean, I'm sure part of the sales job point I'm getting is, is Lincoln said, look, we're going to put you in the system that Baker and Kyler were in. We're going to ask you to make those same throws we're going to have, you know, receivers that make the same, you know, uh, run the same routes. Like, you're going to be playing in this offense that all the NFL teams want. I, w I would have a hard time thinking that it's all the same for him. I mean, do you think that they're going to just let Jalen Hurts air it out? I mean, everybody talks about his accuracy or maybe his issues with accuracy. Uh, you know, and I'll be honest, at the surface, when, th when this first came out, I put on the board, thanks but no thanks. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't think I had the that same this reaction. Was, I didn't think that this was something that Oklahoma wanted to get into. Uh, but when you have the Austin Kendall stuff, and perhaps uh, Lincoln Riley knew that this was about to happen with Austin Kendall, I, I certainly think that the bridge wasn't burned overnight with them. No, uh, but it's burned now. Oh, it definitely burned. It was burned, and then they tried to rebuild it, and they actually fired all the contractors and said, "No, there is no, there is no bridge being rebuilt." What? It, okay, let me ask you this. Back to the Kindle stuff, what is the 
point of it's all petty. No, it is. Absolutely. But what's the point of overly petty? Is it West Virginia you can live with, but everyone on your schedule that you play, you say you can't transfer there? I mean, he's not transferring to Army, but I, that just seems a little much to me. Now you've got your quarterback. And trust me, look, let me be clear. I don't think Lincoln Riley's going to drop this now that he got Jalen Hurts. I don't either. Do you, Josh? No, and, uh, I mean, we talked about it already. I don't understand it. I think it looks so bad. It makes you look petty. And, uh, I mean, uh, you're almost presenting a front like we're really I, – I hate to use the word scared, but there's no better way to say it. Of Austin Kendall, uh, you would, if he was this important, you wouldn't let him go. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, I, it's just his paranoia because Austin knows the playbook. It's more about that than it is getting beat by Austin Kendall and his ability. Well, and, and I think it's interesting, like, they do they really assume that West Virginia is not going to be pretty well-versed in what they do? Or any Big 12 team. Yeah. I mean, it's Gary Patterson. You can watch him during when they did the, the national semifinal. I'm watching that thing. He knew what they were going to do before they did it. Didn't mean he could stop it when yeah. TCU played them. Like, the OU is so talented and so good. The teams that are familiar with them know what they're going to do, but there's not a damn thing they can do about it. I, and, you know, to kind of your point earlier, I, I agree completely that they're going to do some things similarly. Uh, they're not going to totally revamp their offense for Jalen Hurts, but the way they use things and the way they do things, it's going to change. I mean, there's going to be more option variables. You're going to see them do stuff where he is more of a true run threat because, un- I mean – He's not as gifted a runner as Kyler Murray was, but he's also a guy that can take a hit much yeah. more safely yeah. than Kyler Murray could. So well, it's going to be interesting. Like, how yeah. much do you run a guy like Jalen Hurts when, in the back of your mind, you're kind of in a situation now where, and with Austin Kendall gone, you really do, you really don't have any experience behind Jalen Hurts. You have Tanner Mordecai, who will be a redshirt freshman, and uh, Spencer Rattler, obviously, who will be a true freshman. And well, and then you really get into that argument, Eddie, kind of like with Kyler and Austin this year. If anything really detrimental had happened to Kyler, Austin couldn't do what Kyler does. And I know a lot of people really think Tanner Mordecai has a chance to be a good player and that a lot of us and OU fans kind of underrate him. But at the same time, it's the same deal. Tanner Mordecai cannot do the things that Jalen Hurts does, so you would have to change on the fly. Well, and then you have to go – you have to – balance the whole okay how do i use tanner mordecai so that i don't go into 2020 with just one scholarship quarterback we're like if you make it all about getting spencer rattler ready next season letting him play his four games above mordecai like and mordecai's just gonna be like well i gotta transfer out of here i'm not gonna play yeah i would imagine i saw a couple of people talking about it on our message board and i i while I kind of agree with them because I, the writing is probably going to be on the wall for Spencer Rattler. Uh, he is going to be one play out. I mean, it's good. I would think it'll yeah. be a battle for the backup job going into 2019. Right. I mean, do you spend most of the year getting, getting Spencer Rattler ready to take over? I mean, I think you have to basically, I think that's basically, and, but that's going know, if, to, if both of them reach their full potential, Spencer Rattler would obviously be the guy and yeah. win the job and, or do you if wait I, until you get to the national championship against Alabama and then pull Jalen Hurts for Spencer Rattler? That'd be diabolical. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be so vicious. Um, <laughs> but based the, on Lincoln Riley's track record, I have no reason to think that he now, like, that. I, yeah, that he wouldn't do that. If it helped him win a game, he he probably would. By the way, are we sure? If he gave him a half percent chance, better shot of winning that game, he's doing it. Are we sure that Nick Saban hasn't blocked uh, Jalen Hurts' transfer yet? That'd be amazing. Because, I mean, the guy at um, West Virginia now is the ex-Troy coach. So, surely, like, they've crossed paths. He's like, Nick, help me out here. Yeah, Neil Brown. Yep, yep. Little little eye for an eye here. Um, Was it Neil Brown, Tommy Tuberville's offensive coordinator at Tech? Was he? I thought he was up at West Virginia during that time. I think he was at Auburn. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. I think, I think 
Chizik hired him at Auburn. Yeah, he sure was. 2010 to 2012, OCQB, Texas Tech. And that would have been Tuberville. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm Lincoln Riley, because, I mean, obviously this situation is going to come up, and he's he's got to present it kind of like he did with Austin Kendall this year to Mordecai. He's got to make him look like you're going to get a fair shot at this next year. You've got to be hope like anybody on that schedule that you can really drop the hammer on and like have Jalen Hurts out of there by mid second quarter, you've got to do it because you're going to have to give Mordecai, you know, four yeah. or five series at least. And then, okay, we've got our four games here where we can run Spencer out, let him have a look and kind of at least get his feet wet before next year. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how fast Bill Beanbow can get that offensive line gelling together who those guys are going to be. Uh, you know, like, does an Adrian Ely finally take a step up? Does Bray Walker uh, take a step up? But then on top of that, what is it going to look like with OU's run game? How much is... Because, you know, Lincoln Riley's going to love spending his offseason coming up with some plays just for Jalen Hurts, just in the run game. Like you said, option stuff, misdirection stuff, crazy stuff. And then it's going to be interesting to see how well Jalen Hurts can throw the ball in this offense. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, the, what, the one thing that we've always talked about with Lincoln Riley is, is he puts players in best position to make plays. Um, and you, you know, know he's going to throw the ball down the field a lot with these receivers, Kelly. You have to. Maybe with these, maybe with these receivers, though, you just got to get it in a, an, area. an area and let them go get it. Basically, I mean, from what we've seen of Jaden Hazelwood, Theo Weiss, uh, CeeDee Lamb, obviously, yeah. uh, Trajan Bridges, is it, it's kind of along those lines of well, just make sure you get it in an area. They're going to catch it. You know the guy we all keep forgetting? Lee Morris. Yeah. Lee absolutely. Morris goes forgotten like he's not a, uh, and Grant, a really good well, football Grant player. And Grant Calcutera Calcutera. probably had the highest stock up of any player on the team other than CeeDee Lamb late in the year. And not to mention a, a guy in Nick uh, Basquin who, who could he, played, back, he yeah. played well at the end of the year. Yeah, and he's going for the hardship. I, I, you know, and Kerry, you and I have kind of gone back and forth about that. It sounds like that's going to go well for Oklahoma. I hear people pretty optimistic. Well, they didn't have him for senior day, and he mm -hmm. did miss two almost two full years because of Achilles tear. So he's a prime candidate. Like that doesn't Achilles? Get him. Yeah, torn Achilles. Is that no no. That that's I go with Achilles. Okay, well, that's probably my mom. No, I I, I just I a little, little different taste for everybody. Achilles. Just, I think I say both. Whatever comes out of my mouth. Achilles. 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 Eddie, I feel like you that's just said the a way. totally different one. Well, that was that Achilles. was just, that, yeah, that was that was just a mispronunciation <laughs> by me. Achilles. Achilles. I think I say Achilles. Yeah. Eddie, I feel like in general practice, whatever comes out of your mouth is exactly what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, that's true. That's Actually, probably, I yeah. say it how coaches usually say. It. I think coaches say Achilles. If I hear Achilles, I'll say Achilles. Achilles. I don't think I've ever said Achilles. Achilles to me is the. The mythological Achilles is in well, it's your It's the same leg. thing, right? Achilles is what it's named for. Right. I know, but but it's a <laughs> ligament versus a mythological figure. Sure, sure. I mythological figure Achilles. Uh, Brad Pitt was real. Thank you. Brad Pitt? Home of Shawnee. Shawnee, Oklahoma. Born. Shawnee born. Not raised. I still don't understand how Vegas was so off on this whole thing. That is I so weird. It has to be somebody... It was Vegas the, just on, in somebody, on the take? Are they trying to make some, no, some easy I money? No, I bet somebody, that whole thing that Josh unveiled about the, you know, the uh, kind of the understanding that there that was there, mm -hmm. guarantee somebody close to Loxley they got to. I bet Loxley thought he was getting him, without a doubt. Well, I, Josh, you kind of hinted at it today on the on the message board, was, or in your report, was the fact that I, Maryland felt very confident about this situation. The, that it was. I mean, even last night, I, I got the impression they were just waiting to hear he, he's coming to Maryland. So, I that was you know, that guys, was Mike Luxley's first uh, lesson on how different life is going to be now that you're at Maryland. What was it last week during the pod when we really started to get serious about Hertz is a real thing? No, it was right after. Right That's after, because right. we deleted some of the pod where we just shit on the That's thought right. of right. uh, of Hertz even coming here. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
I'll own it. I didn't give this any credence when it started. Like, I'll, that's fine. I'm not going to act like Eddie I did. Eddie and I had the same conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Not uh, a fit. Not going to happen. Can't throw the ball well enough for Lincoln. But my, could, my God, they wanted him bad. With the exception of the Orange Bowl, how long has it been since something big like this hasn't gone Oklahoma's way? I mean, I mean, it have to be Heisman, a recruiting like, loss. Everything that seems close seems to turn up Oklahoma right now. Yeah, they. I mean, that's what I've been saying is the fact that the like brand the, the is the last, as strong as it's ever been. The last, and it's not even bad, but the last negative is probably R.J. Henderson's decommitment. Yeah, which by comparison is not which is addition by subtract. night and day. Yeah, yeah. I think when you, when you yeah, end I up mean, with you Hazelwood, traded R.J. Henderson for Jaden Hazelwood. Yeah, you end up with Jaden Hazelwood. Who's a better player? Yep, no doubt That's about a it. Trade you make all and you day. probably don't end up with him if you have RJ, you know, still signed. Looking back on it, is there any chance in the way that everything went down over that final month with Jaden Hazelwood that he was possibly tipped off or like somebody said to like hurts or something? to hurts or or something along the lines of, hey, we you know we might go after. I bet after, my my guess is after the Fields thing happened. He was probably like, I'm doing this for me. Yeah. No, I could see that because there was a lot of smoke out there with Justin Fields and were they going to be a package deal and, you know, everything that went into that. Well, it was supposed to happen the day after the Orange Bowl. That's true. Well, so as, as reports were. OU is just hell-bent on getting somebody from Alabama, whether it be Pete Golding or Jalen Hurts <laughs> or whoever. But even, even you know, after we... After we got done with the unofficial 40 last week, I we said that Lincoln Riley was hell-bent on getting Jalen Hurts, and I'll be damned if they didn't get him. It's a great job. I mean, he may be a petty SOB, but he gets what he wants. He can recruit his ass off. There's no My doubt about God. it. I mean, he's – the. It, what was we the, didn't get to cover Switzer, but it, it had to be like this. this yeah. I mean, this is the closest that you can come, I think. We – what would have been his biggest pitch? Obviously, I mean, there's a lot that you can offer right now for Oklahoma. Uh, but do you think it was going back on see what I've done with Baker and Kyler? Yeah, absolutely. Just straight up? I think that did it. I, I think that's what did it for his dad. And did it in, you know, like it didn't take us four years, you know. I mean, Baker was our guy and was uh, in the national semifinals his second year. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think ju just Kyler having one year. Yep. I think that's what did it more than anything, probably. Because I mean that, that it's still that's still going to, that's going to go down as the most amazing thing in a one year span in Oklahoma history. I guys, I wrote the the headline for when we when Kyler announced he was going pro, and Bob wrote the story, and I wrote the lead in, and I kind of said, you know, like it's a it's a story that like even movie makers would you know would kind of blush at, and it got me thinking. Which story is more unbelievable, Kyler Murray's or Baker Mayfield's? Because they're both pretty damn far-fetched. Probably Baker's, just, yeah, I'd agree. just because of the, and everybody will get hung up on it, but just because of the way that he got, he ended up in Norman. And not yeah. to say that Kyler's road wasn't incredible either, because, you know, you look at Kyler's thing, and I mentioned it to you guys earlier this week, if Pete Hughes is the head baseball coach at Oklahoma in 2018, there's a very good chance Kyler never plays baseball. And think about how different his life is right now. Wow. He certainly wouldn't have $4.5 million on a platter waiting for him. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's insane. What do you think it's down to by now? Well, he only got half of it, didn't he? Or like a yeah, portion of yeah. it? it? It paid out over two years, I think. I've never been able to figure out his whole financial situation and how that is divvied up. But, I mean, he was wearing a $1,000 shirt in a post-game press conference. Yeah. We that shirt. But at the same time, I've never been struck as somebody that, or he's never struck me as somebody that has grown up with a lot of financial hardships, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I think the Murrays are... I would imagine they're doing okay. Yeah, he's an only child. I had somebody mention to me that you know apparently the, he, he he tweeted about his brother. He he must have a brother. Like that is the strangest thing to me. He's obviously a black sheep because he never had any athletic accomplishments. 
That's weird. No, but Baker is the it's the bigger movie script. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's the dual sport star. He's I mean, Major League Baseball is basically putting themselves out at Kyler Murray's feet and saying, "Take me." Yeah. They're both they're both truly incredible roads. I mean, <laughs> good luck Jalen Hurts. <laughs> You're oh, following man. up two absolute legends. Look, it, I mean, that's a thing. We've been so spoiled covering these guys. We've forgotten what a regular quarterback is like. Like we've forgotten what we've forgotten what it's like to watch Trevor Knight for a full season. Yeah. It's true. We're going to kind of be reminded of that a little bit. You think? I mean, yeah. you you don't think this is going to work out? No, I think it'll work out. I'm just saying we're going to see a guy that has some limitations in the oh, passing I got you. game. And if he doesn't, then Lincoln Riley then Lincoln really Riley is a will quarterback never whisperer. Ever sign a quarterback that isn't number one in the country again? I think say so. if if he makes Jalen Hurts like a sixty five percent passer, I mean, like you're talking about one of the greatest offensive minds that ever lived. Like I don't, I think Hurts can be really good even if he's not that good. But that sort of development in seven or eight months that's ridiculous. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun to watch. I, I I I know we're getting close to the end. I did want to say for people out there that haven't seen it on Twitter or aren't on the board, I've already talked to Spencer Radler. He seems very good about the whole situation. He he was very quick to respond that he's happy that you know that they'll compete next year. He just seems excited to get out there and compete. So I mean, this is Spencer Radler doesn't see this as well. This is Jalen Hurts' job now. But at the same time, he's not a guy that's going to. You'd shy away from the competition. He likes it. And look, let's let's not take I don't even know when Spencer Rattler made those comments about not taking a transfer QB. Let your people are kind of blowing those out of proportion to take him out of context. That was happening when the Justin Fields thing was going on. And we're talking about a multi year, you know, eligible player. Jalen Hurts was biggest, never that. He was That's a, the biggest jumping off. He was a one and done. I mean, it's not. It's not. I don't, Tate Martell was never anybody they were going to look at. Justin Fields was never anybody going to look. And it's because they had Spencer Rattler. And and we said this before too. If he was a mid semester transfer, maybe maybe even Jalen Hurts would be somebody they didn't they weren't interested in. But he's not I, a mid semester guy. I think that's. I think that's right. And you know. And again, if. if if he was going to get sore about that, it wouldn't make any sense because he chose not to come in at mid uh, midterm. Like he, he made that choice that he wanted to finish out his senior year, yeah. which is fine. But that was his call, and I think it forced Oklahoma. And he's to, a you to know make a move. If Spencer Rattler was a, a Texas quarterback, he'd probably be a mid. He's a West Coast kid. I mean, yep. it's just different out there. Those kids aren't thinking about. The fact that they're coming in with three five-star receivers and it'd be in their best interest to come in for spring football. Pretty wild. It was. It's been. Inc- it's been an incredible run. I'm. I uh, am glad it's over. It's been a sprint. I saw our buddy Tyler. Uh, we talked about earlier. Uh, Norman transcript talking about just what a crazy ride this has been since the end of the Orange Bowl, and it has been. It's been nonstop. You still got signing day to come, spring football to come. And will there ever be a more anticipated spring football than this one? Oh, I think maybe one I mean, that had a real I'm trying to Baker's battle. Baker's first spring was a pretty big damn deal. Maybe last but year. But people just had be- seen Kyler. I mean, maybe last year just because Kyler, there was a lot of myself included that really didn't know what to expect with Kyler Murray. I mean, we kind of knew that he was going to be good, probably win the job, but nobody thought he was going to have the season that he had this year. Nobody. And then especially with the baseball thing hanging over his head, uh, well, I guess that was even before he got drafted, though, last year during the spring. Yeah, he so, was missing practices yeah. and going to games and yeah. stuff. And I mean, he was still playing for OU at that point. Remember, he was shuttling back and forth between... OU and Austin or Norman and Austin he flew to play to in Austin, a, yeah. Or no, he that would have been two years ago they played before. Uh he flew from Kansas. The TCU, I think. I think it was. It was TCU, that's right. And he had a home run. Yeah. Um uh, so yeah, I mean But I mean I just know. the fact that this is a brand new guy. No one's ever seen him in an OU uniform before. 
And it's not fair, but all of OU's expectations to remain in the college football playoff are now placed on his shoulders. Because he's, he's I mean, this is a, someone asked me this question. Has any quarterback ever won a national championship at two different places? And I can say without question, no. Be impossible, right? Not impossible, but in this day, yeah. There, I mean, the transfer rules like this didn't exist back in the day. Russell Wilson never played for a championship with NC State. So yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, it's amazing that you can keep coming up with these stories at quarterback every year for OU. You had the walk on, then you had the Texas high school superstar. Now you have a national champion coming in. Next, I mean, what's the next step? Like, is, it, is he going to go into like a handicapped quarterback? Like, uh, that was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> the one-legged quarterback. <laughs> like, like he was born with club feet or something, and they could only save one one foot. Oh. But he wears like one of those those weird spring foots, and the NCAA gave him a waiver. Guys, a, a Actually guy recruits about a Force lot Gump. <laughs> that could truly prove that Lincoln Riley is the greatest quarterback coach ever. I think Zeke Pike has some eligibility. Oh my left. god! Oh my god! <laughs> now, see, people get meth, mad meth at us. Meth sales in Norman would go up exponentially. People get <laughs> mad at us about our takes on Landry Jones. Sometimes we've never beat up a quarterback more than Zeke Pike. Never. Zeke, like. For, you know, people that aren't there, like you go to the army game or you go to the under armor game and it's usually the, the media is all kind of huddled up either in the stands or on the sidelines, you know, wherever we can be or wherever we are. And generally, you know, you're like, ah, you know, that kid just doesn't look great. Like Zeke Pike, it was almost people were like yelling it across the field. Like you're awful. <laughs> like, like, like there was no shame in telling him how bad he was the week he was down there. Yeah, I remember thinking, God, they let any quarterback in this place. That was that was kind of the height when they're just like it seemed like there was like a two or three year run there where there just weren't a lot of good high school quarterbacks, and they those really not good ones kept showing up at the All American games, and all the games were like seventeen, fourteen, and just were awful to watch. By the way, I think my dad was actually mad at me uh, because when he found out that that Mertz kid was from Overland Park, he was like. Mad at me that one, I didn't tell him that Kansas, the state of Kansas, had such a good quarterback, and two, I didn't do more to make him more nationally relevant. <laughs> but that kid's really good. He was awesome that day, man. He was, I mean, you talk about a dude having a day, man. He was just on fire. All right. Uh, a new era, another one year era at the University of Oklahoma. Unless. Somebody surprises us. Well, you still got the tease out there for uh, for what Josh talked about on the board. I don't know if we want to get into it. Just as far Can. as. No, you didn't want to before, and I don't want to do it That's now. That's fine. We'll save it for That's the fine. board. Join Soonerscoop.com if you want to know what we're talking about. How about <laughs> that? Well, not just that, but a lot of different things. And, and we put out the coaching staff lineup and all that stuff before it really got out in the public and. Uh, so, th I mean, th look, th there's never been a better time. Uh, last two weeks proves it. Uh, we make sure that we get our info correct before we throw it out there. We will give you the scuttle button. We'll talk rumors and all that stuff. But before we put anything in big, bold letters and put our name on it, we make sure we try and make sure it's right. Uh, and I think we have a pretty good track record of doing that. So uh, we're not just throwing shit against the wall. I love it. All right, uh, Josh, appreciate it. Eddie, appreciate it. A little emergency into the podcast here. They'll add it on. And, uh, again, thanks for listening, everybody. It's a Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Unofficial 40. We'll see you guys next time a week from now.